Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. Um, this is now question number two, part B. This is question two, part B, from the October-November 2021 IGCSE Cambridge Paper 4, Variant 2. Um, and this question, as I said, part A of this question, um, if you want to find the part, part A of this question um, first, or watch it first, you can click on the link that will appear in this area in the video, and you can go to part A, and um, that will take you there. Um, also, there will be a description in the in the description. You'll find a link to the playlist for this paper, so you could f you could get it from there as well. Now, what we're going to do here in part B is we've got this frequency table, which was made from the cumulative frequency curve. Okay, this is a cumulative frequency curve showing the floor area of 80 houses, and from that frequency frequency uh, curve the the information okay is shown in this frequency table so this frequency table tells us for example here that there are 14 houses for which the floor area is somewhere between 40 and 60 we don't know exactly the floor area of each of these houses but all 14 of these houses has an area somewhere between those values and so on so for example 15 houses have a floor area between 100 and 130 meters squared. We don't know exactly what the floor area is of each of these. They could, they could all be different, okay? But they're somewhere between those values. So how do we find the mean? Well, we can't find the mean, but we can find, as they ask us to do here, an estimate of the mean. And the reason why it's an estimate is because we don't know the exact value of any of these areas. We don't know the exact values. So we have to estimate. And the best way to estimate something like this is to say, okay, there's 14 houses, the area is between somewhere, somewhere between 40 and 60 meters squared. Let's take what's exactly in the middle, the mid-interval value. So we need to find the mid-interval value. Okay, the mid-interval value. In this case, to find the mid-interval value, you add the two um, limits together and divide by two. So halfway between 40 and 60, of course, we know that it's 50. So 100 divided by two, that's going to be 70. That's going to be 90. Here we've got 100 and 130, so it's going to be like 15 along. As you can see, 230 divided by 2 is 115. And again, there's 30, so it's 15 along, that's 145. 290 divided by 2 is 145. And between 160 and 200, well, that's 40 along, so it's 20 along. That's going to be 180, as you can see. 360 divided by 2 is 180. So those are called the mid-interval values. And those are what we estimate each of these 14 well, for the first group, 14 of these houses, we estimate the floor area to be 50 meters squared each. Okay, and it's an estimate because we're not sure, we don't know, but that's the best we can do here. So we take those 14 houses and multiply them by 50 to give you the total area of those 14 houses. And then we want to find the, the, all the total area. The mean is the total sum, okay, of the areas. If you want to find the mean floor area, the total sum of all the areas of all the houses divided by the number of houses. So to find an estimate of the total sum of the areas, we are going to multiply the number of houses by their area. Okay, so 17 houses have an area of 70. Or we estimate that to be 70. Plus 18 houses have an area of 90. 15 houses have an area of 115. Nine houses have an area of 145. And seven houses have an area of 180. And all of that, if we divide it by the number of houses altogether, which is the sum of all these numbers, which, because they already told us there's 80 of those, we can just take that number there. But that 80 would be what you get when you add these together. If they didn't tell us how many entries there were, you'd have to add these together. Common mistake, people divide, they say, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? No, you don't divide by six. There's not six houses, there's 80 houses. There's 14 of them have an area in, in this category, 17 in this category. That's a very common mistake that many students make. They think, oh, there's six entries. No, that, that's not one entry. That's 14 entries. That's 17 entries. That's 18 entries and so on. Altogether, there's 80 houses. And th that will give us a total sum of all the areas. So now we're going to... Um, this is enough for you to get all your new method marks by writing this down. Okay, so that's important for you to know how to do that. So we take the calculator and we put this information in our calculator and 
get the answer. So it's 14 times 50. Let me put it over there so I can see everything. So I've got 14 times 50. Let me just put the fraction actually. 14 times 50. You've got to be very careful when we are showing our steps here. Plus 17 times 70. Plus 18 times 90. It's very easy to forget or to not type the numbers in careful properly. So you've got to be very careful that you do this because you could have the right steps here but type the wrong number in and you'll lose marks for your answer. So the steps are very important to show. You can't just put this in your calculator without showing the steps because you, if you make a mistake, you're definitely going to lose marks. But if you show the steps correctly, you will get most of the marks. So that's 9 times uh, 145 plus, and the last one is, let me look at it properly, 7 times 180. So always check that you typed everything properly. That's divided by 80 houses. Okay, so that gives us my answer of 195 over 2, which is 97.5 meters squared. That is the mean, an estimate of the mean floor area. So 97.5 is the answer we write here. 97.5 meters squared. Okay, so there's the answer to part B. Uh, one, and now I'm going to do part B2 on... Over here, so it says complete the histogram to show the information in the frequency table. Okay, so now this histogram, a histogram is something which has um, what's called a frequency density axis, which is the y axis. And a histogram helps us to fairly show the information in a frequency table in a way that is truly representative of the data. So it's the area of the bar which represents the frequency, not the height of the bar. And frequency uh, histograms are used especially when you have continuous data where the intervals are not the same. And we can see here the intervals are not the same. Now I have the frequency table here, okay? So I'm going to just bring this on this side a bit so I can use it. I'll just put it over here so I can see what's happening. Okay, so I'm just putting in this area over here so I can see exactly what to do. Just let me move this out of the way a bit. Maybe make it a bit smaller. Okay, so I don't have to keep going up and down. Let me just uh, make a copy of this down here. I'll need it again, I think, for the last part. Okay, so let me just look at this and, and our histogram. So now, to find the frequency density, so I'll write here frequency density. I'll put FD. Now, the frequency density is equal to the frequency divided by the width of the interval. So the, the width of the interval here, if you look at the width of the interval, it's from 40 to 60, which is 20. And here the width of the interval is again 20. And here again 20. But now it becomes 30. And again 30. And here it's going to be 40. That's the width of each interval. So the frequency density is found by dividing the frequency by the interval. So this is 14 over 20, which is 7 over 10, which is 0 0.7. So that will be the frequency density of the first one. And we can see that's exactly what it is. This is 0 0.5. Now, you can see each of these is 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So here we've got 0.7, because that's 0 0.6, 0 0.7. So we can see that that's exactly what they've put here. And 17 over 20, that gives you, um, I think that's 0 0.85. Let's just make sure. 17 over 20. Yep, 0 0.85. Okay, so that's 0 0.85, the frequency density here. So we can see again, that's exactly what they've got here. That's 0 0.5, that's 0. Uh, sorry, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and 0 0.85. That's exactly what they've drawn here. So for the next one, it's going to be 18 over 20, which is 9 over 10, which is 0 0.9. 15 over 30, which is a half, 0 0.5. 9 over 30, which is going to be... Um, 3 over 10, which is 0 0.3, and 7 over 40, which is going to give us what? 7 divided by 40 gives us 0 0.175. 0 0.175. So now we've got to plot these as our frequency densities and make the bars as, as wide as these widths. So let's just do that now. Let me make this a bit thinner. Okay, so for the first one it was... 0 0.8, 0 0.9, okay, so from 
from 80 to, 9, to 100, from 80 to 100 it's going to be 0 0.9, which is going to be from here. From 80 to 100, 0 0.9. This is going to look something like this. Just got to have that little bit there. It's not, it doesn't want to go. There. That's 0 0.9. And then 0 0.5 from 100 to 130. From 100 to 130, which is up to here, 0 0.5. So it's going to be exactly along here, up to 130, which stops there. And we have our... Okay, that's up to 130. And then um, it says from, 0 point, from 130 to 160, the frequency is 0 0.3. So 130 to 160, 0 0.3. So that's 0 0.123. It's going to be up, up here from 130 to 160. Okay, and then finally it says between 160 and 200, 0 0.175. Well, that's 0 0.1, that's 0 0.2, that's 0 0.15. So exactly halfway between these two here. It's halfway along there, up to the end. Okay, that's going to give you your histogram. Okay, so there's a histogram showing the frequency density against um, the floor area. And that's complete there. So we have to use the frequency density, which is frequency divided by the interval, the class width. And that makes us gives us a more fair representation of the area, basically of the frequency, because the, the frequency is proportional now to the area of the bar, not to the height of the bar. Okay, so that's frequency density. And then part three says two of the houses are picked at random. Find the probability that one of the houses has a floor area greater than 130, 130 meters squared and the other has a floor area 60 meters squared or less. So if we look at this, greater than 130 is basically these ones here. This is where the area is greater than 130. Greater than or equal to 130, you could say, right? So, or greater than, in fact. The area is greater than 130. These 16 houses have an area greater than 130. And the other has a floor area 60 meters squared or less. Well, it's these 14 here. These 14 houses have an area which is less than or equal to 60. Okay, so we want to find, we wanna, they're going to make two picks. They're going to have first pick and second pick. So the first floor area, um, one of them has to have an area greater than 130 and the other less 60 or less. So we will find the probability that the first house has an area greater than 130. Okay, and the second one has an area less than or equal to 60. Okay, so that's one possibility. But it could also be that the first one has an area which is less than or equal to 60. And the second one has an area which is greater than 130. It could be the other way around. So if we take all the if we take both of these, we've got to multiply these probabilities together. So this is going to be the probability of 16 out of the total number of houses, which is 80. There's 80 houses, as we said. That's the first house having an area greater than 130. And we've got to multiply by that the, the probability that the the second one has an area less than 60 or equal to less than or equal to 60. That's 14 houses left out of 79. Because one house has already been picked the, out of the 80 houses, so there's one left. There's one less from before. So there's 80 first pick and 79 second pick. But there's still 14 houses which have an area less than 60 because the house that was picked first was one of those that had an area greater than um, 130. So there's still 14, these 14 houses less left. So that's one, one outcome which satisfies this condition. The other satis the other outcome that satisfies this is that the first house had an area less than or equal to 60 in which case that would be 14 over 80 times and the second house has an area which is 130 which is greater than 130 meters squared and again there's still 16 of those left 14 out of the houses that we picked we picked one of these 14 there's still these 16 left but there's 79 houses left altogether now what you'll notice is that these two will basically give us the same answer these two fractions because you've got 16 times 14 over 80 times 79 and that's also like 16 times 14 over 18 to 80 times 79 so we've got to base basically add these two together okay and there's two of them so you have two times 
you got 16 over 80 times 14 over 79. That's what happens when you add these two together. You have two of them. So that will give us our answer. So we just have to put that in our calculator. 2 times 16 over 80 times 14 over 79. Close the bracket, and that gives us 28 over 395. Best to leave that as a fraction, because I think that won't round very nicely. Okay, it'll probably give us something which we have to round to 3SF. So leave it as a fraction, that's better. 28 over 395, there's the answer to that question part three. And that completes this question, which is question number two from this paper, October, November 2021. Paper 4, Variant 2 from the Cambridge. Now, if you want to see part A to this question, um, I already put the link earlier, but I'll put the link again over here. This link will be for part A of the question. And over here, you'll find a link that will take you to um, the playlist for this paper, uh, which is, as I said, the paper mentioned above. And you'll see here, another link will take you to the topic of statistics. And um, I guess I'll put histograms under histograms as well okay in general statistics and histograms and then you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link over there thank you for watching and see you soon